Steam Deck, delayed. Going to the moon, delayed. GTA Retrilogy, early. And uh, CPUs, not in stock anymore because of mining. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Let's talk about the big news that popped up everywhere, which is Valve is delaying the Steam Deck by two months. Initially, this was supposed to launch in December of this year. And because of global supply chain issues, they've come out and said that that is not going to happen. And instead, you should look for it in February with them saying, we're sorry about this. We did our best to work around the global supply chain issues, but due to material shortages, components aren't reaching our manufacturing facilities in time for us to meet our initial launch dates, which is just unfortunate given all of the information that they've been kind of revealing to us along the way. The fact that they were shipping it out to developers and all of the developers that were showing off, hey, we got our game working on Linux for the Steam Deck. Get really excited. The fact that they're pushing it back kind of sucks, but I also completely understand. However, it does make it sting just a little bit more knowing that AMD is likely going to be launching a new CPU in January. And then this will be like a generation and a half behind on the Zen 2 stuff. Like I really like the RDNA 2, but the longer it gets delayed, it's kind of like when that butthole company released their handheld gaming console. It was running on Maxwell, which at that point was already multiple generations old. And it's kind of like, a little underwhelming in the hardware department, but I, I just, I'm gonna wait, okay? My pre-order for the 512 gig now s has slipped to after Q2 previously, even though I ordered it the day of, was in Q2 of 2022. So now I will just have to wait until, I mean, basically a year. We're looking at after Q2, that could be in exactly a year from now. I might be getting it for Christmas 2023. And when are we going back to the moon? Not 2024, like the initial Project Artemis was slating for NASA to return to the moon for America. American astronauts. Now it looks like 2025 is when the slippage is happening to, which makes a little bit of sense considering the fact that it didn't seem likely that we were going to do it in 2024, regardless of the announcement that we were going to do it. I mean, the Space Force hasn't even defeated Space Ghost yet. How do you go to the moon when Space Ghost isn't dead? That's what I need to go. Space Coast, coast to coast. I always saw it on Cartoon Network when I stayed up way too late and it was a talk show and I didn't get it and I was way too young and I shouldn't like it was just so dry and bland and I was too young for it. You were a spaceman who died and became a space ghost. I've always ghost. been dead, Conan. No one can always be dead, space ghost. I was dead long before you were born, Conan and I'll be dead long before you're dead. And we're too young for this world for trying to get hard drives over NVMe inf interfaces. That's right, I said it, hard drives over NVMe interfaces as it came out. Just not something that you particularly want, given that the speed of a hard drive isn't something that makes it easier, but it consolidates what servers might need in order to be able to have diff- You don't need SATA anymore. You can just have a single hard drive that's done it. Seagate coming out with a proprietary controller that can run SAS, SATA, and NVMe over their native NVMe port and doesn't require any bridges. And it's currently just a proof of concept, but it should be available sometime in mid 2024. Does this matter to the end consumer? No, but it's cool technology. This means if you got the PCI Express NVMe interface, you might be able to put it on the PlayStation 5, which is kind of my kick as of late. What can we make happen on the PS5's M.2 port? I want to see it happen. And a lot of people wanted to see the remasters of GTA's trilogy, which let me know since it's out today. Are you playing it? Are you enjoying it? Do you like it? I want to hear from you on that. But some Somebody got their copy early and they uploaded YouTube videos of it showing how it works and it kind of has similar structures to the GTA 5 game as well as just some quality of life improvements that you wouldn't expect from a normal remaster that's just supposed to be up the textures and things like that. Also being shown off is the fact that the old school cheats still work, all right? I don't remember any of them, but I'm sure if I start playing them, like guys, just sound off with your favorite GTA cheats down below in those comments. I want to know what the favorites of yours were. <laughs> But you know what's a real life cheat? You want a real life infinite money glitch? It's crypto, okay? I'm getting way too in invested in this crypto stonks segment. Let's get into the crypto stonks, okay? Bitcoin sliding down 6.3%. It was hitting its all time high, 68,000. Look at that gorgeousness. It's now slipped down to $63,121. Just completely losing that top right there. Still above 60, but not anywhere near the high point that it was at. Ethereum also cratering 6% to be at 44.80. A Dogecoin also down 10% to sit at now under 25 cents. Meme stonks also not 
having a good time. GameStop down 3.59% to close at 199.19 and AMC closing down 4% to close at 38.27. But you know what didn't close? You know what opened for the first time? Rivian debuting in its IPO has the sixth most valuable IPO in American history valued at $77 billion upon launch. It started off at around $80, immediately jumped 106, peaked at roughly 120 and then closed the day off at $100. That valuation makes it the second most valuable American car company based on market cap compared to only Tesla at this point. Blowing past GM and Ford, even though they've only shipped like seven cars. Man, the stock market, my friends, like if let's just talk about like impact on the economy. If Rivian shut their doors today, our economy wouldn't lose a whole lot. But if you shut down Ford and GM, like that would cause like massive just infrastructure problems with every, are they really? How does the stock market work? It's magic, all right? I don't understand it. And you know what I do understand? The trials and tribulations of needing accessibility options, especially when you're trying to rent on Airbnb, go somewhere else for a stay for the weekend, or in our case, trying to rent an Airbnb so that we don't have to pay lavish hotel fees in Philadelphia when our son needs to go in for surgery and now Airbnb is now opening up accessibility search options which they've had a few of them before just kind of little filters that you could tick but now they have more verification of accessibility features and they're going to put them as a high priority in the listings that are happening. So that includes things like wide entrances to the bedroom, step-free bedroom access, accessible parking. This is all stuff that's pretty big for us. We've actually had it happen where we booked a place because it looked great. It seemed like it was going to work but then because it wasn't verified by Airbnb when we got there. It was only stairs for my wife to carry my four-year-old son who's non-mobile and all of our stuff up the stairs by herself because I wasn't there and you can't leave him alone and you can't put him down anywhere and he's also sometimes aggressive and having seizures and like we could have mitigated all of this if there was any verification of the accessibility options which Airbnb is now doing so I'm thankful for that and you might be thankful for Instagram asking you to take a break because you can now opt into that option of the them now letting you decide in 10, 20 or 30 minute intervals that you want to be told to get off their app, which TikTok kind of already does that. If you've been swiping in the feed too long, it'll be like, hold up, get away. All right, you've been on TikTok way too dang long. Go have a life. Instagram now forcing you to choose to have somebody yell at you to leave the app. And another social media company changing things, YouTube now announcing that they're gonna be hiding the dislike number on all YouTube videos moving forwards to prevent dogpiling and people coming in and just liking to see that dislike like number go up and up and up. The dislike button will still remain and creators will still be able to see that on the back end so that we can still gauge the public's interest in videos that we put out. But could you guys do me a favor? Could you just click the dislike button now that it's going away? Can we make this the most disliked episode of hot news ever for no valid reason besides YouTube is getting rid of the dislike number. Let's see that number get as high as we possibly can. Let's go out in a bang of glory, okay my friends? Hit that dislike button. Can this video get 1 million dislikes. 1 million dislikes or I'll drown myself. Will you be deterred from disliking videos if you can't see that you're adding to a vocal chorus of people saying, hey, this video sucks or does this not really change anything from you? And now let's talk about something you guys are gonna really dislike. There's a new cryptocurrency out there that's gonna take advantage of the L3 cash on Ryzen processors and make it so that they're super profitable and make it so that it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to purchase them at all. The new cryptocurrency known as Raptorium is coming out and it uses the CPU for its proof of work algorithm. And it also happens to benefit from L3 cache, which is something that AMD chips have in drove 64 megabytes of L3 cache on the 5950 and 5900X, which based on the profitability calculator puts you at a profit of $4 a day on the 5950X, which is actually really respectable, especially when you put it up against GPUs, the 5900X coming in at 343 a day. And then you consider the fact that things like AMD's 3D V cache is supposed to be coming out where you could get up to 192 megabytes of L3 cache on those next gen chips and they could be even more profitable. Now, don't necessarily think that this is going to make it so that these CPUs aren't available anywhere because unlike GPUs, which you can slot in multiples of in a given PC system and have the fixed cost of the RAM, the CPU and the motherboard kind of all assumed and the power supply and you could get something like six or maybe even 12 to one of those depending on the power needs and how all of that. With CPUs, it is a little trickier because you would have to buy the RAM, the motherboard, the power supply, and 
a GPU to have it all set up for that because you can only have one CPU per socket. On Epic, it might be a little more cost effective because you can have dual socket stuff, but then those motherboards are stupid expensive. I wouldn't expect that this is going to create a CPU mining craze. However, it might just eat up a little bit of inventory instead of people buying, you know, lower end B450 boards with something like an Athlon 200GE, they might spring for the 5950X instead. And it's going to eat up like one CPU at a time as opposed to like 85 GPUs at a time because you can just slot those in anywhere. But what do you think of this new cryptocurrency potentially taking out your rising ships? Want to hear from you down below in the comments. And you don't want to hear from me anymore. Not today, okay? Because this episode of Hot News is finito, done, okay? We've got one more episode of Hot News on this channel. We'll be migrating to a new channel. I know a lot of you are asking, what's the channel? What's the link? Don't worry. We're going to make this transition as easy and smooth as possible, but just stay here from now. Stay, stay put. And we'll have that announcement video on why this is happening coming out over the weekend on the UFD Tech channel. But with that being said, I'm done. Get out of my face. Go away.